Peter Pan syndrome. Have you known a narcissistic person that seems childlike? Have you seen the type of narcissistic person who refuses to take adult accountability in situations or act like a grown up? My name is Lise Colucci and I am here to help you understand and heal from narcissistic people in your life. So let's just go over some of the traits of Peter Pan syndrome or a very immature childlike narcissist. People who are like this have trouble with long-term plans. They are the masters of the future faking. Everything seems really great and really fun and really exciting and they have all these fantastic plans but they can't follow through with any of them. They will rely on other people to take care of them. So if you've been with someone like this, you may find yourself in the role of Wendy or whatever the male equivalent of a Wendy would be, right? A Wendell? So you may be the person who is taking care of everything for them while they sit back and do nothing. There's a childlike innocence about it and they seem to pull you into doing for them in a way that's very covert, very sneaky. You almost think it's a gift to you to do for them. People like this also struggle with decision making. Well, because the decision would be like saying, yes to something, but what if something better comes along? They're very non-committal. They don't like to have deep, committed relationships. If they are going into deeper, longer-term relationships, there's a whole lot of codependency usually going on in the relationship. Making sense? Have you known someone like this? We're going to talk about a few more traits here in a second, but hit the thumbs up if you have experienced this. So we know that narcissists in general do not take accountability and have no interest in taking accountability really. But there's a special sort of lack of growth, no interest in improving themselves, even if they are into self-improvement. Does that make sense? It's almost like they learn the words and the information because it's fun to talk about themselves, but they don't actually do anything to make any changes. And they really don't have much interest. They're more interested in the fun things, in keeping it light, in keeping, in basically the world revolving around them. And at that point, you know, you become Tinkerbell. Do you see where I'm going here? You're either doing for them as their caretaker or you're doing for them as their magical fun friend that keeps everything light and happy for them. People like this tend to have money issues or issues with anything where responsibility is needed. Also, people who tend to be very conflict avoidant. And now when I say conflict avoidant, I don't mean that they don't have conflict because narcissistic people stir the pot. They love the drama. They create issues through the way that they interact when there is conflict. What someone like this will do is gaslight you masterfully. They will play the victim. They will avoid, they will deflect. They will get tangential, right? So that they're talking about something else that is not really on topic to take the attention elsewhere. And they do this in a way where they play innocent and childlike and Oftentimes that creates a feeling of guilt or taking of the blame on the person that they are gaslighting. So you may feel responsible. You may feel like it's your fault. You may feel like you went too far. You were unkind, you, you know, because of the way they're manipulating. People are self-centered, chillant, bratty, aloof, haughty, demanding. When provoked, they are infallible and childlike. You know, they will disappear if, they will be the ones to go completely silent treatment, not in a leering, staring way, but in a like just disappear kind of way. And don't forget the charm. There is absolute charm in a person like this because they're fun, because they're childlike, because they are lighthearted when they're not gaslighting and being manipulative. All right, their narrative is one of them only wanting the easy things in life, the light things in life, and everybody else to pick up the slack and take care of them. They have an absolute fear of criticism because their egos are huge and childlike. Their idea of love is very idealized based. So once they have stopped idealizing you, they need to get another Wendy or Wendell, right? They need a ton of affirmation, a ton of 
adoration going toward them. I've talked to people in coaching who have had this type of person in their life and often been married to them for many years. And I know I said that they don't do commitment well, but when they do do commitment, as I said, there's a lot of codependency and that's what happens, a lot of enabling. The, a lot of people that I've talked to have had this type of narcissistic person also have substance abuse or, or other addictions in their life, whether it be sexual addiction or you know alcohol addiction, and they are impulsive with it and then get away with it because of the childlike charm. So it can be really difficult because what happens is the setup of the need to take care of this person becomes the priority of the relationship. And when you are prioritizing taking care of someone else, you forget yourself. And when you forget yourself, you forget that you are part of the relationship too and you matter and being treated this way isn't okay. And so it can be difficult to leave. It can be difficult to leave as well because you have done so much for this person and you are taking care of this person and you legitimately see how they cannot function without you. And people who have a lot of empathy tend often to feel very guilty when someone is reliant on them and they walk away, even if that person is incredibly toxic to them. Making sense? Let me know in the comments, you guys. Another problem here, okay, is these types of narcissistic people tend to be more covert narcissists, more vulnerable narcissists. So as we know, they're harder to spot. They're harder to really see, is this person narcissistic or not? That childlike innocence can look like empathy. That expression of fun victim stance that they take can look like empathy. It can look like they feel bad about what they did. People often say, I can see that they feel bad. They're just not willing to admit it. They're not willing to, you know, they've, and which makes someone stick around a lot longer than they should with someone like this. So those are just some of the traits of what we're calling Peter Pan syndrome here, but really it's just childlike covert narcissism. Watch the playlist for covert narcissism for more information on covert narcissism and to let me know what you think in the comments of any of the videos, okay? I'll see you over there on one of those videos.